Today we're going to build this simple SaaS subscription based website using Next.js on the front end, Prisma, MongoDB, and Stripe. The way our application is going to work is this. The user will land on our landing page where they'll see that this is the member zone. Our monthly fee is $8 a month to become a member. Once the user clicks the sign in button, they'll be redirected to our Google OAuth screen via auth.js. Once they're signed in, they'll be redirected back to the home screen. And when they click the dashboard button, they'll become a Stripe member. And at that point, since the user has not entered in a, entered a credit card and became a member, they'll be considered on a free plan. And because they're on a free plan, they're only going to see this message of consider subscribing. But once the user clicks on upgrade, they'll be redirected to our Stripe checkout in which they can enter in a Stripe credit card. Once the user clicks subscribe and the payment is processed, if all goes well, they'll be redirected to our dashboard success page. And then once the user clicks on dashboard in the nav bar or back to the dashboard page link that we have here, they'll be redirected to a view that they can now see that they're subscribed and they have access to the daily member content. If the user clicks manage billing, They'll be redirected to Stripe where they have the ability to cancel the plan and also make modifications if need be. This is a fantastic way to get started on a simple SaaS subscription based website that you can eventually build upon and scale and add more additional features. If this is something you'll be interested in learning, stay tuned and I'm going to walk you through how I set it up. So to kick us off, what I have is a simple Next.js application that does not have TypeScript and we are using the app router. Um, since it's a quick tutorial, I wanna to try to save as much time as I can. Um, so first thing we wanna do is set up our authentication. And for today's project, we'll be using Off.js. So we'll go ahead and navigate over to the documents and get started. All right, and for today, in this particular project, we're going to be using version 5. I know it is still in beta, so depending on when you see this video, you may need to make some changes to your code. Um, but if not, um, let's just go ahead and jump in and get started. So we'll start by installing the first dependency. And then we'll need to add the off secret to our .env file. And ideally, you would want to make this something that is a little more complicated to identify. Uh, but because this is just a simple project, I'm not going to worry about making it too complicated. But make sure this is something that no one else can has visibility to. And it is pretty difficult to figure out. All right. Now, next, we want to set up our off.js file and the root of our, of our application. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this now. In the root directory, let's add a file name off.js. And let's just paste in the code that we just copied from the documentation. Next, we want to create our app route handlers. And I'm just going to copy and create a new directory inside of the app folder and just paste in what I copied. And within it, I'm going to add a file named route.js. And within it, we want to bring in this particular code that's listed within the snippet. And I'm going to remove the initial handlers and just re-import it just to make sure that we're grabbing it from the off file that we just created now we want to set up our adapter um, because we do want to save our user to our database and in this project um, we're going to be using prisma so um, within the documentation we'll go to the menu and let's go to adapters and we want to select the Prisma adapter and first we need to set up Prisma before we begin to set up the client and the rest of the configuration so back within the terminal I'm going to type in the command npm i d and then Prisma and press enter then 
then we'll go um, npmi at prisma slash client. Then we'll want to go npx prisma init. And this should give us a prisma directory. Here we have it here. And it also gives us a schema.prisma file. So now that we have prisma installed, let's just go back to the docs and finish the steps. So we'll install the prisma adapter next. And then we'll install Prisma after it. Okay, now we do need to make some changes to our off.js file. And let's go to it now. Okay, so first we need to bring in the Prisma adapter. And then we'll need to bring in the Prisma client. And instead of bringing in the Prisma client directly into the off.js file, I like to keep it separate. So I'm going to create a separate location for our Prisma function. So within the root directory, let's create a new folder named lib. And within it, let's add a file named prisma.js. Prisma.js. And we'll paste in a Prisma function. This particular function comes directly from the Prisma docs. I just want to save us a little bit of time versus typing it out and going to the docs and copying it. We'll just add it in. Um, so just feel free to pause the video and paste what you see on the screen. And we can close this file out. Now back in the off.js, let's go ahead and bring in the Prisma adapter right above providers. Let's just paste in the copied adapter from the documentation. And where Prisma is being passed into the adapter, let's remove the M and the A. And if we type those characters back out, back out, excuse me, it should you should see the ability to import it from the lib directory. So let's just save this file and we probably should have kept it open, but it's okay. We'll go back to the documentation and it appears that we have everything that we need set up. So now what we want to do is bring in our user schema. And for this project, we're going to be using MongoDB. So let's go ahead and copy the schema file listed um, directly from the documentation. And we'll go back to our project. And within the Prisma folder, let's click on the file name schema.prisma. And within it, let's just go ahead and highlight all of the code that is currently within it. And we'll probably get in the error right now because we have some additional models that we won't be using. So let's go ahead and remove the authenticator model. And let's scroll back up to the user. And let's go ahead and remove the user. Let's, let's also remove the authenticator from the user uh, for the empty array because we won't be using that for this particular project. But while we're in our Prisma file, let's just go ahead and update the schema. And the only change that we'll need to make to this schema file is to add a field for the Stripe customer ID. So let's, um, within this, the model, within the user model, excuse me, let's type in Stripe, S-T-R-I-P-E, underscore customer, underscore ID. And this will be a string. And we'll also give it a question mark. Let me make sure I spell customer right. Yep, that looks good. Okay, now let's just go ahead and save this file. And we can close it out. Now the next thing we want to do is set up our connection string to MongoDB. Okay, so now that I'm logged into my MongoDB cloud, what we want to do is create a project. Feel free to name the project, whatever you like.
And from here, we'll go ahead and click on create a project. Next, we should be redirected to the create a cluster overview window. So we'll click on create cluster and I'm going to select the free tier and be sure to select the region that's closest to you and we'll click on create deployment. And I'm just going to keep the same password that's created. Um, be sure to keep this confidential and we'll click on choose a connection method and we're going to select MongoDB for VS Code. We'll give it a few moments while it creates our cluster. Oh, looks like it's ready. So we'll just go ahead and click on this connection string and click done. And we can go back to the documentation and reduce our window. Now um, with the copy connection string, let's go to our directory and click on the .env file. And let's just remove the database URL and replace it with what we just copied. And because we didn't, we also need to include the name of our database and we didn't change the table name or anything. We kept it as is. So um, at the end of your connection string, add in test and save the file. Now, if we go back to the documentation, we need to apply the schema. So in order to do that, what we'll do is back, go back to our terminal and type in the command npx prisma db push and press enter and for me because I'm on Windows I received this security um, alert and I'll just click on allow and after we've clicked on DB push let's then type in inside of the terminal npx prisma generate and press enter Now that we have Prisma set up, we technically can start our project and we'll notice that we'll have our database set up with our user and things will function properly. But what we want to do now is set up the ability to log in with the OAuth provider and the provider that we're going to use is Google. So we'll go back to the auth.js documentation and we'll look for providers and we're going to click on Google and what we need is to add a our Google auth uh, excuse me our Google ID and Google secret inside of our environment variables so I'm going to click on I'm going to click on copy and inside of the .env file I'm going to paste in the Google ID and Google secret that I just copied from the documentation you can change this um, you'll just need to make sure you update your code accordingly but um, there's really no need to change it we're just going to keep it as is now in order to get our google id and google secret we'll need to go to the google console and set up um, credentials now i already have credentials set up and I'm, i don't want to bore you and walk you through that process in this particular video if you need help with it, I'll put a video in the description that shows you how to set up Google credentials. Um, but I'm just going to use the credentials for an existing project that I already have. So what I'll do is I'll click on the client ID and go back to VS Code and paste in the client ID. And then I'm going to go inside of the name of my web app, which is Web Client one I'm going to copy my secret and paste it inside of my .env file, close it out, and we'll also save the credentials file, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll save the API credentials setup. Um, so we don't need this anymore, so we technically can close it out, but I'm just gonna minimize the screen for right now. And if we head back to the documentation, it appears that we need to bring in the Google provider from, we need to bring in the Google provider inside of our auth.js file. So I'm going to copy import Google and go back to my auth.js and bring in the import and then inside of providers, I'm going to pass in Google. So we'll go ahead and 
add it then save the file and I'm not going to worry about refresh tokens or setting up the email so with that we should be ready to log in and utilize Google within our application so um, at this point what we'll do is we'll go ahead and type the command um, npm run dev to spin up our local host and to test it out um, we're going to add in the sign in and sign out buttons in just a moment but we're going to go ahead and just go to api off slash sign in um, actually i'm going to do it on in a separate window i think i may already have a user logged in on this one so give me just a second yes All right, so great. It takes us to sign in with Google. And if we sign in and we're redirected to the home page, so it appears that it is set up correctly. Um, but next, what we'll do now is we'll just go ahead and work on setting up the sign in and sign out buttons and styling our layout and implementing Stripe. So we'll go ahead and work on that. So now that we have our authentication set up, let's go ahead and begin to set up the layout and implement the logic to set up our subscription based website. So first within the app directory, let's add a new folder named quotation or well, named website wrapped in quotation marks. And within it, let's move our page.js file so that it's within the website folder. Now we have a little bit of organization of where our website is versus the overall app layout. And within website, let's add another file named layout.js. And we'll do the RFCE template. And we'll pass in children. And remove this children. And add that. Great. Let's save it. Okay. And now within the website directory let's add another directory named underscore components within this we're going to hold the components to our website so the first one that we want to establish is a header and we'll go header.js and we'll add the rfce template replace the lowercase header with an uppercase and let's add our header within our layout.js file so we'll go within it and we'll add the header we'll save the file and we now see header on the screen so we can close out the layout file now within components let's add another folder or excuse me another file and let's name it box.js and I'm gonna add the RAFCE template and we'll go with the uppercase box so what this is this is strictly for styling purposes i just like to have consistent padding within the website um totally optional um you don't have to add it but this is just something that i like to have so i'm going to pass in the children first and within the div we'll add children and then we'll give our div a class name for some styling. I'm going to go max with screen Excel. And we'll go MX auto. Then we'll go on um, extra large or on large devices, excuse me. We'll go padding on the X of 20. Uh, padding X 20. And on medium devices, we'll go padding on the X of 10 small will go padding on the X of two and by default we'll set the padding to four let's save this and we won't see anything just yet but we'll start we can close out the box that will save the file first excuse me slow down a second close out the box.js and within the header let's remove the div and replace it with a header and this header will have a class name of and we'll give it a padding on the wild four and within it let's bring in the box that we just created 
and we'll add in header just to see what it looks like on the screen and as you can see it is now a it has a little bit of padding on the y and there's some padding on the x as well that's because we're using the box as a reusable component so that we can have some padding consistently throughout our site and now that we are within the header let's go ahead and update it so that we can bring in our user icon and display it if we have a session so first I'm going to mark this as a asynchronous file um, because we'll be using some server-side logic within it and we have our box already next we want to bring in the off uh, so we'll go import auth and we want to bring it from at auth. We also want to bring in sign in and sign out. These will be used to help us manage logging in and logging out uh, well, excuse me, within our header. Then we want to bring in the link from next link. And just for styling purposes, not necessarily relevant to the project, I'm going to install React. I want to install M, um, React icons, NPMI React icons. That way we can use a login icon to, excuse me, a user icon to log in and a logout icon to log out. So I'm just going to go import and then we'll go from React icons. And I like to use the FI icons, nothing relevant. Feel free to use whatever you want. And now the main things well, for the logic that actually matters within the header, let's add in a session so that we can get access to the auth file within our auth.js. And then we're going to create a variable named user and we're going to assign it to session.user. And we're going to include the question mark in the event that we don't have a user or a session. Um, we want the ability to return something and not break our application. And within the return statement, now that we have access to the user, um, what we want to do is we'll start by displaying a simple logo. And so what I'll do is within the components folder, let's add logo.js and we'll go RFCE template and let's just add a logo that way if we want to come back and style it later it's already a separate component save and close this out um, and you know what we probably ought to put this in a nav bar forgive me let me add a nav and we'll give this nav a class name of flex justify between items centered and we'll give a little bit of border bottom and padding on the Y of four. Okay, so now we see we have a border. We got a little more padding on the Y and we now have a logo. And I think I want to make this logo a link. That way we can navigate back to the home screen if need be. So within logo, the logo component, let's remove the div. Let's replace it with a link and make sure this is being imported from next link. Give it a href of slash, which will navigate back to the home screen. Now um, it'll automatically take us back home if we happen to go away. Well, when we go away from the home page. So that cares for the logo. Now what we want to do is say if there's a user, we want to display some information. And we can actually go ahead and add a div for it. And then if we don't have a user, we want to display some information as well. And what we want to display is a sign in and sign out button. And you actually can get this directly from the auth.js documentation. Because we're using server side components, um, I'm going to use the form method and not a on click method which would mean we'll have to use some client side javascript and this header would have to become a client side component so within this same file because i'm not looking to use it anywhere else within the um within the application let's just create two functions the first one is going to be sign in button 
and we'll just give it a return statement and I actually could have copied this directly from the docs to save us a little bit of time but we'll just type it out um, within the, so within the return statement we'll pass in a form and then we'll pass um, of course the form will need an action and it's going to be an asynchronous action and what we want to do is declare that this is going to be a server action and we'll say await and we want to get access to sign in that we've already imported from the auth.js and then within the form we want to have access to a button and we'll just say button and I'll give it a type of submit and within the button I'm going to just pass in um, if this is sign in I just want to pass in fi user and that's going to be imported from react icons and we'll give it a class name a height of four a width of four and we'll save the file and this one is going to be if we don't have a user so we'll go ahead and import it right here save it and then now what we'll need is a function <clears throat> to log out excuse me and we'll just go log out button and we'll go return actually I could just copy uh, all of this and instead of sign in we'll go sign out and instead of fi user we'll go fi log out and we'll save it and we can add it right here to log out button and we see we have our log out button right here great <clears throat> now since we're already here the next thing I'd like to do is add a link to a dashboard route we haven't created the dashboard route, but let's just go ahead and um, create it now. So within the website folder, let's add another folder named dashboard. And within it, let's pass in a file named page.js, which is going to represent the dashboard page, the route for it. And we'll do the RFCE template just to create it. And let's name this dashboard page All right now let's save this file and back within our header the div that represents um, an active user well, I guess that's the only div that we have let's add a class name of flex item centered let's go space on the X of three and I think that should just about do it let's save this and now what I want is a link to the dashboard page. So I'm going to add in link that we've already imported. Give it a href of dashboard. And I'll just pass in dashboard. Save the file. Great. We see it on the screen. Refresh the page. I'm going to go to dashboard. The route changes. Go to logo. The route changes. And let's make sure the sign in and sign out work as well. We'll go back to home. Let's go to sign out. We immediately get a user. We'll click on sign in, sign in with Google, and we'll automatically redirect it back to the home screen, <clears throat> excuse me, with the logout button in the header and dashboard. Okay, great. So now that we have this, um, what we'll do next is we'll add some simple styling to the home page. We'll begin to style our dashboard, then we'll set up Stripe, add in some helper functions, test it all out, and we'll be all set. Okay, so up first, what, I, what we'll do is we're just going to update our home page. This isn't anything necessarily relevant to the project. Feel free to make this your own, um, but I'm going to include the code in the description, so just bear with me. Um, first, I'm just going to remove the div and replace it with a section tag. Then I'm just going to paste in some code. Oh, forgive me. Then next, let's add a box so that we have the appropriate padding. And finally, I'm just going to paste in some code that I have just to give us a little bit of styling for a home page. Um, and it's just going to be a simple landing page. I do have React FI icons listed here, so I'm just going to import the FI circle icon. 
if you save this file and you're following the exact same code that I have this is what you should see and it's just a simple member zone landing page that's eight dollars a month and I just added in some additional text excuse me and if we save the file we can close out that page.js and where we want to go now um, is to the dashboard page because that's where we're going to have all of the logic um, so if we click on dashboard it'll take us to the dashboard page and that's the link that I was referring to now within the website directory let's click on the dash dashboard folder and let's click on page.js and within it let's remove this div and replace it with a section and then we want to add in a box just for some styling and we can just add dashboard page just to have something on the screen and this will be enough to get us up and going for right now so um, what we want to do on this particular page is have the ability for the user to see if they are um, if they have a subscription or not and the way we're going to go about doing this um, is by creating some help, helper functions and utilizing the auth.js session. So let's go ahead and do this first. Um, within the lib directory, I'm going to add another file named billing.js. So within the billing.js file, let's begin by bringing in some imports. First, we want to bring in auth. And this is going to come from the auth.js file. Next, we want to bring in Stripe. And that's capital Stripe, sorry. Next, we'll bring in the Prisma client. And I like just going to use a separate Prisma client. We could have used the same one that we already created earlier, but we'll just create a separate one. And then to initiate it, we'll go const Prisma is equal to new Prisma client and be sure to call it like that and then next up what we want to do is we want to bring in um, stripe so we'll go export const stripe is equal to new stripe and we'll go string process dot env dot stripe uh, make sure this is all cap s t r i p e underscore secret and then within it we want to pass in the API version and we're going to be using the 2023-10-16 add a comma and let's just save the file now we need to add in our stripe secret so let's go ahead and copy this stripe secret as is typed on the screen and within the .env file, let's paste in our secret. And we're going to get our secret from Stripe. And I included the link to the Stripe CLI in the description. Um, all you need to do is log in and create a test account or log in to create an account. Um, it will allow you to create a account in test mode or just a test account. But it does ask for some sensitive information, so I'm not going to walk you through that process in the video. But it's pretty simple. Um, but if you do need a hand with it, just let me know, and I'll be happy to just kind of type out the instructions on what to do. <clears throat> but once you're logged in, what you want to do is create a product. And then once you've created a product, um, as I've done here, I've named it Member Zone. Um, and this particular product is a subscription. Once you're in your particular product, just click on developers and the first thing we want to grab is the API key we want to grab the secret that we just um, created in the .env so just click to copy this and go back to your stripe secret key and just paste it in and then close out the .env file first function that we want to create is if there is no customer or if the customer is no we want to create a customer so I'm going to add in that code now and this and as you see this is an asynchronous function and we're going to access this function within our dashboard page um, I'm going to include all of the code in the description and if you want me to kind of go into a little more detail I am going to have a 
different site or a different project coming out in the upcoming days that I'll go into a bit more detail explaining how this code works and the way you want to use it. The next function that we want to have is to generate a customer portal. With this function, we'll be passing in a customer ID and we're going to, I'm going to show you how we initiate that customer ID on the dashboard page. And if there's no customer ID, we just want to return that message in the console. Otherwise, we want to create the portal using the Stripe billing portal. So what we'll need to add, we, we're already passing in the customer ID. We just need to add a return URL. So I'm going to copy this code. And we'll go back to our .env file. And the redirect for us is going to be HTTP colon slash slash localhost 3000. If we were deploying this, we would need to update this, um, but we just need to set a redirect URL for Stripe, and it can't be listed directly. It has to be as a variable. So just go ahead and save and close out your .env. Next up, we want to check to see if the customer has a subscription. The way we're going to check, first we're going to capture the session that's coming from off the off.js file that we have created. Then if there's a session, we're going to find that user by email, and then we'll just check to see if they have the Stripe customer ID. And if so, we'll say they have the subscription. If they don't, then we'll be able to distinguish that they don't. Last but certainly not least, we'll need to create the checkout link. And we set up a custom checkout for our project. You can have it redirect to the pre-built Stripe success page, but I just decided that we'll create our own and we'll add this dashboard success page in a moment. This information you do need to capture from the Stripe, um, from the Stripe dashboard. So what we want to do is go back to Stripe and if we click on product catalog and click on member zone, the name of our project, we want to grab the API ID that's listed right here. Let's just copy it and be sure to paste it into the price. This is going to let our application know what price from a line item perspective we should be using. And we'll go ahead and paste it in. Now let's just be sure to save this file and close it out. And give me just a second. Okay. So finally, what we want to do is go back to our dashboard page and implement some of the logic that we just created. So first up, we'll go ahead and mark this as a asynchronous page because this is a everything is written in the server and this particular project. And let's go ahead and bring in some imports. First, we'll start with auth from at auth. And we want to bring in Prisma. This is going to come from at lib Prisma. And we'll also go ahead and bring in link from next link. Now we'll, we'll need to also bring in the helper functions that we just created, but we'll kind of bring those in as we walk through the implementation of using them. So within the dashboard page, um, let's go ahead and bring in our session. Well, excuse me, let's go ahead and gain access to um, our auth. And I'm going to name it um, session, of course. And we'll go with off. Be sure to call it. Then we're going to go const user is equal to session with a question mark, question mark, excuse me, dot user. Then we'll say if, because we're on the dashboard page and we want to keep this protected, we'll say if there's no user, then we'll go next redirect and be sure to import it from next navigation. And we want to redirect the user back to the home page. And now that cares for the authentication of the website and the application. Oh, excuse me. Now that cares for that. Now let's go ahead and get access to that user email. So we'll create a variable named const user email. And we'll set it equal to user.email. And then we'll say if the customer is no, so first it wants that. So what we want to do first is once that user 
clicks on once they log in and click on dashboard we immediately want to create a customer so the first function that we're going to call is create customer so we'll go await and we'll go create customer if no and we'll just call it like that next up we want the ability to grab the user's information and we're going to grab it by the email so underneath that function um, we're going to go ahead and fetch the user by email and this is going to get us the user's ID because we're saving it by the email so we'll go const existing user user is equal to await and we'll go prisma dot user dot find unique u n i q u e and we'll go where email is equal to user email and we'll hit save next what I want to do is generate the customer link and what this is give us and what this will give us the ability to is to manage if the customer wants to cancel their subscription or view their subscription they'll be able to do so by clicking on the manage link so we'll go const manage m-a-n-a-g-e underscore link and we'll go await and for this one we're going to grab the generate customer portal and we'll go an empty string plus existing customer and we'll add a question mark and that URL will be um, concluded by including that URL will also include the stripe underscore customer ID so we'll go stripe s-t-r-i-p-e underscore customer underscore ID and this is the same ID that we're storing within the database next we want to check if the user has a subscription leave some notes and then we'll go const has sub is equal to await has subscription and we'll be sure to call it and then last but not le least <clears throat> we want the ability to create a link for the customer or create a checkout link so we'll go create checkout link and this will be const checkout underscore link is equal to await create and there we go checkout link and this will also have an empty string and we'll go existing customer with a question mark and then that will be the stripe underscore customer ID and just to make sure we're getting everything I like to eh, I won't worry about it okay so now that we have our helper functions imported and we have them in our da dashboard page let's go ahead and add them to our layout so within the box I'm going to add a div and we'll give it a class name of flex flex we'll set the direction the column we'll set a width to full a little margin bottom of 20 We'll set the items to center, gap of two, and we'll make the text size to be medium. And within that div, we'll add another div, and this will be the div that I kind of act as a nav bar on the dashboard page. We'll go flex, then justify between item centered, and we'll make the width of this to be full. And this first um, in the, on the div on the left hand side will be the manage billing link. So we'll go link and it's already imported. We'll give it a href and yeah, what's the right one? We'll go with empty string plus manage link. And remember that is this link and that's what it's going to do. It's going to generate the customer portal for us based off that helper function that we created. And then inside of the link, we'll give it a class name. And this is just for styling, nothing necessarily relevant to the project. And we'll go cursor pointer. And we'll go manage billing. 
let's save it so after manage link let's add another div and this one will say has sub and within it if they have a subscription we just want to show a div that says subscribe um, else what we want to show is let me bring this up a little bit we'll have a div and we'll go class name of flex item centered a little bit of space and what we want to show is free plan free plan let's hit save and then we want a link to stripe uh, we'll go check out link upgrade here and let's hit save and let's add a little bit let's add a message right here that way we can see it dynamically change so I'm gonna come I'm gonna go outside the of two divs um, after the JavaScript and I'm gonna add another um, some more JavaScript <laughs> and we'll go has subscription and if you do we'll go h1 class name of text center and we'll say um, daily member content and if there is no subscription then we want to say h1 we'll go class name text centered and we'll say consider subscribing all right and then now um, we're going to try to upgrade let's see what we get and as you can see we are redirected to stripe and I'm going to type in my credit card and we'll just enter in some fake information and we'll go Jace the goat and I'm gonna remove that we'll click subscribe up oh, once the zip code just type in three four five hit processing and if it works it should redirect us to dashboard success which we haven't created so within the dashboard let's add a page named success or a folder excuse me named success and then inside of it let's add a file named page.js let's click let's add the rfce snippet inside of it uh oh there we go success page let's save it okay so we see that we it was a success let's add a box and how do we want to style this we won't we won't add anything um, too elaborate um, let's just add a div class name of flex margin top of 24 let's go justify center set the height the screen and then we'll go div class flex flex column we'll go space on the y of four and we'll have a h uh, we'll go up, up p tag uh, and we'll say thanks for joining thanks for joining and then we'll add a link back to the dashboard and we'll say back to dashboard page okay and now that you see we have this update on the screen now if we click on this we should see that we are now a member and you see that we do it says we're subscribed it says we have daily member content all right so it appears that it is working 
and if we click on this manage billing link it looks like it is going to undefined so let me take a look in the terminal let me just a moment okay it appears that the issue is error generating customer portal can't generate a portal in test mode customer portal settings in test mode building okay so we just need to go to the settings billing portal and we'll go to customer portal and right here active test link so we'll activate it it says it's active now so now let's refresh okay and if we click on it we see that we are redirected and we have the ability to cancel our plan and we see that we're a member for eight dollars per month and we have access to any content that we want to dynamically display to our user um, because they are a paying because they're paying us on a monthly basis as a monthly subscriber so that should take care of us I hope that you enjoyed today's relatively quick tutorial on how to set up a simple SaaS subscription site um, using Next.js, Prisma, MongoDB, and Stripe um, like I said, I will have a longer, more informative video coming out later on this week, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this one, feel free to give me a like. Um, consider subscribing. Leave any comments and suggestions in the, excuse me, leave any comments or questions or suggestions in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Love you, man.